Um, it's always been there. Uh, it probably comes from my mum, uh, who was a very, uh, very much an animal person. Um, my dad was too, but he was uh, he was probably more concerned with with moral rectitude as regards human to human contact, if you like. But I remember sitting down and and being asked to eat my Sunday dinner, and it was lamb, and I hated the sort of texture of it anyway. It was all fatty and nasty, you know. But but my dad had worked really hard to get this because we were very poor when I was a kid. And my dad would say, "Look, you you eat your dinner because I've worked very hard to buy that for you and whatever." And um, and I said to my mum, "Well, this is lamb. Is is this the same kind of lamb as as like you see these little lambs in the fields? I mean, these fluffy things, you know?" And she went, "Um." And she hesitated, and then she said, "Well, I have to tell you, yes, it is basically the same, and uh, not all of us feel very comfortable about this." Um, and from that moment on. I never ate lamb again. I was allowed to uh, <laughs> to refuse, and I suppose it went from there. I mean, it's funny, you know. You live your life, and you, you you do tend to turn a blind eye a lot of the time. I remember the first time I went to Italy, I ordered this stuff called veal, and I didn't really know what veal was. And I thought, well, that's very nice. I wonder what this is. And then they told me how veal is made, basically by keeping these poor animals in horrible conditions of darkness and sometimes they even their feet are nailed to the ground to, to to keep the meat white and i never ate veal after that so it was a gradual process i don't eat meat now are um, you a complete vegetarian brian i'm not a perfect vegetarian and i'm not a preacher in this area i do think that there there is a case to be made and i'm not an extremist i can see that if if you're in africa and animals need to be you know, numbers need to be controlled or whatever, then the animals had a healthy life and a good quick death. Maybe you could eat that. I can understand that. You know, I've, I've eaten a sort of gazelle-like creature in Africa. But it's such a different prospect from eating an animal which has been farmed and had antibiotics pumped into it because of the conditions it's been brought up in and uh, it's, and hasn't had a, a healthy life. It, it's a kind of karma thing, strangely enough, as well. Mm. You know, mm. if you cause cruelty, then I think... Uh, you suffer yourself. And I think that's a terrible sickness. I think this whole uh, th this whole society of ours is rather sick because of the way that it treats animals. And I think the sickness affects every one of us. It has to change. If you'd like to know more about the Save Me campaign, if you get a pencil and paper, I'll give you the web address in a moment and you can learn more about Brian's campaign. Um, I've got to talk to you. I can't have mm. Brian May on the show and mm. not talk about, um, well, <laughs> it's been called the greatest song of all time. It, it always tops the, the polls in the charts. Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm. And where that whole concept came from, it was so radically different in 1975 when it, when it went straight to number one then. Where Indeed. did it come from? I mean, it's just such well, an amazing song. It is, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you should really be asking Freddie, and he's not oh, available. I wish I could. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, I don't think even Freddie would be able to answer it in, in detail, and he probably wouldn't want to. Mm. Um, it's his vision, really, and of course we all contributed, but it really was his dream. And um, it's about the inner workings of the Freddie mind, I think. <laughs> I mean, Roger and I both have have strong theories about about the song, but it's it's part of Freddie's journey, you know, and it is exceptional. There is nothing in the world like Bohemian Rhapsody, and we all feel very proud of it and proud of Freddie, and we always will. Um, it's an amazing piece of work, and uh, sometimes the time is just right, and the the situation is right, and magic happens. Do you remember how Freddie explained the song to you? <laughs> explained mm. what he was doing with it. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, because it was very difficult to play it um, because it has all these breaks in it. So you would play the piano a bit and sing along with it. And you go, OK, now here's the operatic bit. You know, this is where it stops and this is where we do this, 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 this. And so the backing track was put down in bits and assembled afterwards. And um, we all just trusted him. He used to come in with little notes all over his little pieces of paper, which came from his dad's work, um, with A's and B's and C sharps all over them. And we just worked our way through it all. Fascinating. Let's hear it. Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. The wonderful Bohemian Rhapsody uh, from Queen, of course. It's been a, a real delight to have Brian May with me. Do I should say Dr. Brian May, CBE, with me on the programme today. Thank you very much. Brian, we've been talking about your Save Me campaign. We're, we're going to the polls the, to, to vote on Thursday. Um, yes. 
and it's it's something it's just another angle if you like of this huge political campaign for the general election that i suppose you want people to think about when they cast their vote so we're going to the polls on thursday and when people go to to, to cast their vote what message do you have for them my message is when all the talk of economics is over and how much money we're all going to make and, and how little tax we're going to pay ask yourselves the question before you cast your vote is your candidate going to bring back fox hunting and hair coursing and the other vile practices which we more or less got rid of in 2004 um, if you want advice please go to our website uh, save me dot org dot uk actually i should say save dash me dot org dot uk because we have done a whole study of who is going to vote which way so make sure your candidate is going to vote against repealing uh, the the hunting act if you care about animals